Well, hi everyone. Seasons greetings. Merry Christmas here from. Let me put my scarf on. I'm here in Santa Claus, Arizona. What a weird little ghost town. It's just four acres and it has a story. Do you want to hear the story? I've got my Christmas sparkle glasses and my scarf and I'm going to tell you about this little town. It's so adorable. It's so abandoned. What happened here behind these red and green tinsel covered walls of the town of Santa Claus? Well, I'm going to tell you the story of it. You'll find no shortage of ghost towns along Route 66, but one of the strangest by far has been the abandoned town of Santa Claus, Arizona. Once a bustling year-round holiday-themed stop for road-tripping motorists, its glory days are now long past. It's mostly inhabited by rattlesnakes. That's the last thing you'd expect to find in a place called Santa Claus, am I right? It's probably the farthest thing from festive that you can imagine now, but back in the day, Santa Claus wasn't always this run down. In fact, it was one of the most popular stops along the mother road. Santa Claus was founded in 1937 by an eccentric realtor named Nina Talbot, who by the way I heard was 300 pounds of full of fun, which makes me love her already because we have that in common. She hoped to create a resort town in the Arizona desert and inexplicably gave her destination town a Christmas theme. Her plan was for the holiday themed attractions to bring people to the town, an idea that surprisingly worked, at least for a little bit. The Swiss chalet inspired Cinderella's dollhouse and the Santa Claus Inn, later renamed the Christmas Tree Inn, were two of the town's most popular attractions. Kids could sit on Santa's lap all year round. <laughs> oh, sorry. The inn became famous for its rum pie a la Kris Kringle. Road weary travels in the 40s and 50s, they were glad to pull over in Santa Claus to enjoy a home cooked meal in the air conditioned restaurant and let their kids chill the F out for a little bit, if I'm being honest. Famed restaurant reviewer Duncan Hines, that's right, Duncan Hines rated the inn as one of the best places to stop and eat around the Arizona stretch of Route 66, and business remained steady through the 60s. When you think of the glory days of Route 66, kitschy shops like Santa Claus are probably some of the first things that come to mind. But the most popular feature of the town was the post office. It was especially popular for parents to send their children's letters to Santa to the town so they could then come back postmarked from Santa Claus. Pretty cute. By the 1970s, the popularity of Route 66 was waning, probably because of airlines, Pan Am, thanks a lot, and the town of Santa Claus was struggling. The main attractions closed by the mid-70s and the town was removed from maps of Arizona. Because the town never attracted residents beyond those who worked in the holiday-themed businesses, it was abandoned when the roadside stops shut down. Today, instead of Christmas elves, rum pie, and snowmen, you'll find poisonous snakes, oh that's good, and not much else in Santa Claus. There's a few abandoned buildings that past the barbed wire and underneath the layers of graffiti still retain a touch of their former festive candy cane paint. I guess that's what happens when you stop believing in Santa Claus, y'all. This story originally appeared in the Road Trippers Chronicles blog, and I will post the link to it in my description. But let's just take a look at what we've got left from this place. It's very small. It's just a few of these buildings, and it's right on the side, of course, of this busy highway now. It's not Route 66. I don't, I don't remember what the name of this one is, but it's super loud. Um, and you, if you blink, you would miss this place. But it is really cool to just see the, the graffiti looks really neat on everything. Here would have been that little filling station that I showed you a picture of earlier. I'll just pop it back up on the screen. Oh, Nina Talbot, I wonder what you would think of this town now. I, I can't imagine anyone would buy a house in a subdivision out here outside of Kingman, Arizona. And my aunt lives out here, so what does that say about her? Stacy? what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> oh, look, there's a little outhouse probably filled with rattlesnakes now that I have researched. I know that I was just, just prancing about in this place of death. It sure is peaceful out here. Although that does look like a murdery barn in the back. 
It's kind of eerie just being out here in this area with so much history. But I will say, 100% if I was a kid, I would beg to have stopped here. I would have begged, take me to the Christmas town. So, I mean, I can see how it would have been pretty neat back in the day. Oh, and it's for sale. I don't know if I mentioned. It's for sale. It's gone down from, I think it was 80 acres at one point when Nina started this. And now it's all the way down to four acres. Right on the side of this busy highway. So, if you're in the market... I think we looked at another town that was for sale outside of Needles, California. You could buy the both and do something with them. What a neat piece of Americana history. Quick, make a wish, there's a whale. If that bitch from the ring pops out, though i am going to call i'm going to call a uh, a and have them come rescue my ass i'm not here for that today okay wait a second did you guys just hear someone say okay back to me because i was by myself when i was talking on that camera let's hear it again i'm not here for that today okay that sounds like a voice to me well, that's going to do it here for me at Santa Claus, Arizona. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned a little about history. And I hope that you've been nice and not naughty. Or you will be taken to this place in your dreams. Until I see you next, until I see you next time, remember, keep it paranormal. If you need a mattress... Do you need a mattress, Barney? It's a bed and breakfast. Now where's my breakfast? It's very sharp, barbed wire, I'm so sorry.